It is our midterm critique day. So under our unit modules, you'll see that there is a whole unit, unit 10 for the midterm critique, right? This is actually gonna count as one of your proving grounds. It's about managing ambiguity. <laughs> and we'll get to how we do that. It's gonna be after we take our midterm exam. But what you're going to do are two things. One is you're going to get your files ready for physical printing. We're going to physically print them in the lab. Or we're going to look at them in the class. The other thing is you're going to post images of your best projects, your three best projects from up until now, the same ones that you're printing out, and you're just going to post JPEG images of them to this post, which is at the end of the midterm critique unit, unit 10. And that's where the proving ground comes in. Basically, did you participate in putting your artwork up for judgment? That's one of the proving grounds. And then did you critique your own work samples by the same rubric that you're going to be critiquing others? And then did you critique others using this rubric? And you're going to do um, a to it gives you directions here. You're going to do five other students, right? And I want you to pick, once we have all the portfolios up, two portfolios you think are particularly strong, two that you think are kind of in the middle, and one that you think is weak, right, and needs, needs help. And we're going to critique with these criteria. So just read through this. You'll understand. This will also help you understand how we're going to be scoring the work in the classroom, okay? So this is where you're going to give your individual input. In the classroom, I'm going to put you in groups, and you're going to have to all agree on your scores within that group. And then those scores I'll average, and that will be your midterm critique score for your work. It will make sense. What I wanted to do this video for was to show you how to print, right, for the in-class. So I've pulled three assignments. I'm going to open them all up. I've actually duplicated them using option and, and made copies of them to the desktop because I'm going to turn these into print ready files. With the logo assignment, we learned how to make things print ready, right? Because that's very easy with a vector that can be infinitely scaled. But with some of these other projects, like our proving ground of the creature scape, like our emoji exercise two, these can be a little bit trickier. This is exercise one, especially if they're not formatted already into a shape that matches the pre-cut map, right? So on the supply list, I asked you to get mats for the midterm critique that have an opening of eight by 10 inches, and then the outside of them is 11 by 14. We print on white paper that is eight and a half by 11 inches, letter size paper. The truth is that mat window is actually seven and a half inches by nine and a half inches, even though it says it's eight by 10. And that's because they give you a quarter inch overlap on each side. So if we want to be really exact to the mats, though the mats sometimes are not exactly cut the way they're supposed to be, what we want to do is take our image size on these print ready versions. Before we do anything, we want to flatten them. Remember, these are copies and we're not going to save over our assignment one or our proving ground one but we're going to flatten them. And then we're going to check their image size and we're going to make sure they fit within seven and a half by nine and a half in a way we like. If I make it seven and a half width, the width here is actually bigger than the height. So I'm going to make the height seven and a half and it's going to automatically lock, especially if I don't resample it, right? It's automatically going to keep the same pixels, but it's going to give me the orientation, which is 7.5 by 8.1. Now, if I put that on the paper, so the next thing I do is canvas size just to see what it would look like in the mat. And for this, I'm going to put a width of 9.5 and a height of 7.5 with a white background. So if I printed it at this, it's below 8 by 10. It's high enough resolution, but in the mat, there'll just be a white stripe on both sides. So that's not ideal. So what I do in this case to kind of float it with white all the way around 
is to take the image size, uncheck resample, so we're keeping your highest resolution, and instead I'm going to make the height closer to six and a half. When I do that, then I make the canvas size exactly what the mat should be, which is 7.5. Sorry, the width is going to be a 9.5, and the height is going to be 7.5. Then that's what it would look like within the mat. And I just think that looks a little bit cleaner, a little bit better than just having stripes on the top and bottom. So now once I've seen exactly how it will print, I'm going to save it. It's flattened and I save as on my computer because I'm changing the format, not a Photoshop because that takes extra memory, rather as a TIFF. This is called an archive format, T-I-F-F. -F. And I always put PR in front of it. It stands for print ready. So there's no doubt that when I see this, I know that this is made for printing and printing alone. So I save that. Because it's a TIFF, it's going to give me this option. And I always want to choose, the default would be none, I always want to choose LZW compression. LZW is a lossless compression format, which means it does not hurt your image at all as things get changed, saved, opened again. It just takes a tiny bit longer for it to save, a tiny bit longer to open, it's like an origami folding of the data. It's a beautiful thing, but it's great for the archive format, that is TIFF, when you have your finished file flattened, but you're trying to save memory because you want to keep these things forever. So where are you going to upload that? You see my PR file there. I usually mark them as purple. You're going to go to the class canvas, to the home page. You're going to go to links. And under links, it will give you the Dropbox login info. Once you log into Dropbox, it will remember you once you're logged in. It's the class account. It's the NLC Arts Lab account. You'll see this. You're going to go to the first folder, which is digital art class files, and then the first folder, flatten TIFF files. And you will see a folder for you there. I'm going to use my folder. And then all you do is drag and drop your print ready files that are flattened TIFFs at at least 300 pixels per inch at the desired size, you drop them in and they will upload. And then I'm able to print them from our printers. So let's do that again with these. So with my emoji, again, I have to flatten it. And when I flatten it, because it was a PNG, it's going to fill in the background with white. So I go to Layer, Flatten Image. It's okay to discard hidden layers, things not used. And now I need to go to Image Size. And this was 12 by 14 by 350. I uncheck Resample. I want to keep the original resolution. But I'm going to take the width down to 7.5 inches. And then it's going to be by 8.75. So I can decide, okay, I have enough white space on the width already, so I'm going to go to 8 inches. And then it'll be 8 by 9.3, and that works well. And then to see exactly how it looks in the mat, I can go to canvas size, and I can put in those exact dimensions of 7.5 by 9.5. Even though what you purchase says 8 by 10, it's really 7.5 by 9.5. When I say okay, it's going to ask if I want to proceed, because my canvas size that I put in is a little bit smaller, than, than what I just said, or what I actually have in the image. So it's actually having to cut pixels, but that's showing me exactly how it will match. With drop shadows and things, make sure you're not going too close to the edge, otherwise that drop shadow will cut off. All right, once that's done, I'm going to save it as, not overwrite, always save as, as my print ready to the desktop, TIFF format with LZW. Keep everything else the same, and I'll mark it as purple. Okay, this one. This one is very much square format, so I have to decide, will this look better on a rectangle that's 
horizontal or a rectangle that's vertical. I tend to like more vertical. I'm kind of prone to uh, Polaroid format where you have a little bit more white on the bottom and then white all the way around. So I'm going to go to canvas size and I'm just going to immediately put in or see what it is. I should go to image size first and really I should flatten it first. So layer, flatten image, save memory, discard hidden layers. This is just for printing. We go to image size and I see that I have a 10 by 10 by 350. I have resample unchecked. So it will keep the original resolution. So you'll see that resolution go up as I shrink it. And I'm going to make this, because I have white space on all sides, I'm going to make this 7.5 inches square. And now it's like 450 something resolution. And now I'm going to go to canvas size. And I'm going to put that exactly 7.5 wide by 9.5 tall. And then it will center it. And that's how it would look in the mat. Now, if I wanted to just move it slightly up, I can do that because I like to have a weighted bottom. But I can also just adjust that physically in the mat because I have enough overlap between an 8.5 by 11 print and a 7.5 by 9.5 window. But that, that looks pretty good. Maybe I moved it up a little too much. It can be adjusted in the mat. So now I save it, save as to my computer, changing format, put in PR for print ready, change it from a Photoshop to a TIFF. That's why that folder in Dropbox is called flatten TIFF files <laughs> to remind you. These are not your Photoshop files. These are your print ready files. They are our archive file format and you always want LZW. All right. Now that I have those all saved, I just need to put them into my Dropbox. They are all the print ready ones with PR. I just drag and drop them into my folder. And now I'm ready to print them. And I'm ready to tape them into my mats in that very particular way. So let me show you how you're going to tape them into your mats. You're going to take your printout and you're going to tape it. So you're going to flip it over onto the back of the mat window. And I'm just going to draw here in this video where you should tape it. You're going to tape it here. Oh, let's see. There we go. You're going to do a little piece of tape here. A little piece of tape here. And a little piece of tape. And this tape needs to be plastic tape, like scotch tape or completely acid-free archival tape. Do not use masking tape or blue painter's tape. The only tape that's not plastic tape that's acid-free is made for framing. And you pay a lot for it. So for these smaller prints, we can just use the scotch tape. And you tape it to the, pretend this gray is the, is the mat. And we are looking with x-ray vision to where the tape is going behind the paper onto the back of the mat. So that is where you tape. That is your tape position. The important thing is to avoid the corners. Do not overlap the corners and do not tack it on the sides. That's so that the, the print can breathe as it absorbs moisture and different humidities, especially as the ink is drying, and uh, it won't buckle in the mat. Because the mat's going to buckle a little bit too. It's made of paper. It's going to absorb different moistures. And never leave your mats or your prints in the car. Like that kind of oven heating is just going to curl them up. Our inks are archival pigments. So they will last forever, but they are not UV protected, right? So when you make fine art prints and you want to make them as durable as possible, you spray them with a UV protectant spray. 
UV light 